Gnostic occasion of the initiation of these new disciples of Satchinandana Swami and Indraguna Swami as they come into the family of Iskhan. A very wonderful opportunity. A very wonderful opportunity, very solemn event, most important event in their lives. And so we're going to proceed through these uh, different steps in the ceremony. Satchinandana Swami will speak about the importance of initiation. And uh, the reason you all are here is to give these disciples your blessings so that they can continue and be strong and have the support of the greater ISKCON family as they go through life and continue with their vows. All right? Okay. All of the initiates, take the spoon from your Ashwa cup in your left hand. See what you're doing? <coughs> left hand, one spoon full of water. Place it into the right palm. Om Keshavaya Namaha. Repeat. Place it. Drop it to the side. A second time. Om Narayanaya Namaha. Rinse it. Third time. Om Madhavaya Namaha. Om Madhavaya Om Apavitra 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 Sarvavastram Sarvavastram Dopeva Dopeva Jasmaret Jasmaret Undarikaksham Undarikaksham Sabaya Sabaya Antara Sushi Sushi Sri Vishnu Sri Vishnu Sri Vishnu Sri Vishnu Hey, 
And on and on over such souls like Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur and then further down the line up to Brahma and up to Krishna. This is our line and you should see your initiation as entering and connecting with this parampara. Now in order to make the connection strong, it requires two, the spiritual master, the contemporary spiritual master as a representative of this line, and you as someone who wants to connect. The duty of the spiritual master is to represent the teachings as they are and to, and to instruct his uh, disciples accordingly. And the duty of the disciples in order so that this connection becomes something real and something workable uh, is that the disciple mm, obtains mantras. In first initiation it is uh, the authorization to chant the holy name. And in second initiation the Gayatri mantras. The disciple receives these mantras and together with this mantra, with these mantra, certain rules how to bring the chanting of these mantras to full fruition. Let us start with the Maha Mantra and the first initiation, those who are initiated there. If you want that the chanting of the Maha Mantra uh, is mm, giving the desired results, uh, you will need to observe very meticulously to uh, 
uh, you will need to avoid committing the 10 offenses and you will need uh, to give your chanting a regular number in the Nawa movement this is 16 rounds see outside there's a beautiful sun uh, and we feel the brightness and the warmth of the sun but imagine clouds would come before the sun at that time we would feel cold we would feel gloomy and distressed maybe so the holy name the Mahamata is given to you today but if you commit the ten offenses and don't follow the rules properly then unfortunately clouds are coming in between you and Krishna uh, I wish you all a cloud free life <laughs> so that you can take full advantage of uh, the son of the holy name the ten offenses I believe are known um, to all of you but uh, as it is done because it's so important uh, process is given to you and also how to apply the process I will repeat them based on Srila Bhaktivinoda goes Harinam Chintamani I will say them in a positive way let me now find my glasses an embarrassing reality when one gets older <laughs> Maybe someone in the meantime has old men's glasses. They are always the same. Then let me do by heart. So positive injunction is praise Vaishnavas no need to offend them if you have this in your heart I praise Vaishnavas and then consider uh, the, uh, that everyone including the great Devatas is in, uh, totally dependent on Krishna uh, always look for instructions of the spiritual master and follow them in other words avoid the ten offenses by doing positive action it is uh, better for you to think oh i i will praise vaishnavas than to think oh let me not offend vaishnavas uh, fix a positive uh, perspective of the ten offenses in your mind and you will see that it's much easier mm. also follow a dharma codex in your life there are four principles in your spiritual life. Uh, uh, you must be truthful. Uh, truthfulness is destroyed if you take part in gambling uh, and so on. You should be disciplined uh, in, in life. Discipline is destroyed if you, mm, mm, if you take to to, to intoxication it it makes you very very uh, very very dull uh, this intoxication the other is you should be pure inside and outside if you are mm, not, if you are uh, doing illicit relationships to the opposite sex your purity will be compromised and both internally your mind will be hazy and physically uh, you will also have uh, a sense of impurity and uh, the last of the dharmic principles which is established when you follow our four regulative principles is be be generous to others don't uh, be, be good to others be kind to others uh, don't be violent in other words and so you can see how these four regulative principles no mm, illicit sex life no mm, gambling no intoxication and no meat eating have a very very dharmic result if you 
maintain these principles, you will replay, retain truthfulness, a purity, um, discipline, and uh, 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 mercifulness in your life. So, uh, you can see, uh, chanting 16 rounds free from offenses, accompanied by following four regulative principles, makes your life uh, very spiritual and very congenial uh, so that you can lead a bona fide spiritual life. The other uh, initiation is the second initiation, which is given today um, by His Holiness Indra Dogna Maharaj. Here you will get um, the mantras of the twice born. Um, every human being can be um, uh, born uh, not only biologically, but spiritually. And this mantra, where you will meditate three, three times a day on Lord Krishna, on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and on your Guru Maharaj, will equip you with all the necessary uh, things uh, for your spirit, uh, for your Brahminical life. One thing, my dear devotees, second initiation, be careful with these mantras. Um, nourish them by chanting them. Don't starve your mantras by forgetting to chant the morning Gayatri, the noon Gayatri, and the evening Gayatri. If you starve them, these mantras will leave you and you will not chant uh, the, uh, them very nicely any longer. But the result of starving your Gayatri mantras will be that you will chant them without taste and you will not have the benefit of them. So, I wish for the first initiate a cloudless life where you bask regularly in the full manifestation of the Holy Name and for the second, and this will happen if you practice the rules and regulations and uh, 16 rounds each day if you do this meticulously and for the second initiates I, uh, I want to uh, humbly uh, wish you all the best keep these mantras intact keep a Brahminical life intact which is as your glorious Spirit Master teaches you um, a life where you share the knowledge of Krishna consciousness with others. Don't be a selfish Brahmana who gets uh, uh, stuck in his own little miserable mind uh, because he does not observe this uh, glorious sharing of knowledge in, the, in some uh, role in the preaching mission. My time is up. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Shila Babu Bhadaki, His Holiness in the Dhamma Maharajaki, Go Ray Manandi. much loved and appreciated throughout the international society of Krishna consciousness and beyond. Many different spiritual groups invite Maharaj to come and share his realizations with them so that we get a few moments of Maharaj's sanghas, very rare and very precious to my heart. Sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sadhu shastrukhoi, lava matra, sadhu sangha, sadhu siddhi hoi. Um, if we can get just a love and which means less than a second's association with an advanced devotee of the Lord, 
Um, the verse says we can achieve perfection. And how is that? Because if we take the realizations that he's sharing with us to heart, and we act upon them, then we can achieve perfection. So Maharaj has spoken so wonderfully about the importance of first and second initiation. These instructions, of course, are most pertinent to the initiates who are taking their vows today, but all of us are either initiated or we're seeking initiation, and his words of wisdom we should take to the heart and cultivate those words and take advantage of this very rare and precious association. And Maharaj and I, we go back way, way, way back to the early days in Europe, and um, I was in France and Maharaj was in Germany, and we used to meet on important occasions. He was a Ramachal and I was a Brihastra. And now we're two sannyasis sitting together serving the Holy Spirit of our spiritual master. But I have many wonderful memories of, um, of Maharaj and Kirtan and classes and various associations. So for me especially, this is a very precious moment. Thank you, Maharaj, for joining us today at the initiate. I'd also like to thank all of you. I was shocked. Rasika told me it's going to be a little ceremony, you know, downstairs, and this morning the devotees will come. So we, we actually need you because um, this comes a big family, and um, every devotee knows we need as much mercy as we can get to be successful in our pursuit of Krishna consciousness. Shri Nartan Dash Thakur was a, a great hero to many of us. In one of his songs, he said, Hari Guru Vaishnava Bhagavata Gita. It was a focus on getting the mercy of Hari, which is Krishna. And Hari means he who takes away all in our Um We need the mercy of Guru, of Gurus, and we need the mercy of the Vaishnavas. It's interesting to note that in that poem, he says, Hari Guru Vaishnava Bhagavata Gita. And many times when devotees sing the song in Kirtan, they say Bhagavad Gita, but actually it's Bhagavata, which means devotee. And then the eternal wisdom of Gita. So he's stressing twice the importance of the association with devotees. Hari, Guru, Vaishnava, Bhagavata, two times. Because just as we need the mercy of our spiritual master to understand Krishna, similarly we need the association and the mercy of the Vaishnavas to understand how to properly serve our glorious spiritual master. It's like a chain going up like that. So we understand how to serve our Guru and our Param Guru, Sri Prabhupada, and each other's association. By the mercy of our Guru, we understand who is Krishna. So every part of that formula is essential. You can't remove any part and be successful. I heard Prabhupada say one time, Anyone who thinks he can become Krishna conscious, living outside the association of devotees, is living in a dream, he's living in a hallucination. So therefore it's very, um, it's very nice you've come today to give your mercy to these um, initiates. Um, the Lord will certainly bless them. He's coming before them in a very unique form. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Someone said as we were walking in, there's no deities present. I said, no, we have the mantra. Kali Kali Nam Kali Kali Namu Krishna Avatar. Kali Raj Goswami says, in the age of Kali, the sound of Krishna's name is the incarnation of this age. So the Lord is present, very much present, because they're receiving the mantra. And, uh, Shiva Prabhupada is here in the form of his instructions, and Guru is here in the form of our beloved Sachin. <laughs> so many Vaishnavas, so this whole hall has been transformed into the Kumpa. We thank all of you for coming. This is a monumental moment in the life of these devotees. You could say, I would say actually, this is the most important moment in their lives, in their existence, since they left the spiritual world. And when was that? Brahmanda Brahmati Konya Bhagivanji Guru Krishna Prashad Bhai Bhakti It's just incalculable how long a time we've been trans, transmigrating from universe to universe, from 
species of life to species of life, from body to body. Prabhupada said, since time immemorial, so we can't count how long we've been going down. Sometimes we get a little perk up, but it's more like this. <laughs> we think, oh, I'm going upwards, just because I'm just going like this. <laughs> but then, the whole journey back home is outlined by our charyas. Adoshvadha, somehow by our past pious activity or some previous devotional service, or in many cases, like myself, just the causeless mercy of devotee intervening into my downward spiral. Um, we get a little interest in Krishna consciousness and we associate with devotees and we take up the process. And then when we're serious about the process, we're determined, I want nothing more than going back home, back to Godhead. Then when we're convinced and we're ready to take the vows that are required to give up our attachments to this world and to chant the mantras which keep us close to the lotus feet of the Lord, then we get the diksha, we get the initiation. Both first and second. So that's the turning point in our existence. So it's like this, we're falling, 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 we come into contact with the devotees, take up the process, we get our diksha, then we start going up. So just envision that. It's a big smile. <laughs> and that's this day. This is the moment people say, oh, the day that I was born, the day I graduated, the day I met her, <laughs> the day I met him, our first baby. These are significant, especially in the lives of Vaishnavas, because everything is auspicious for a Vaishnava, because everything's offered for the pleasure of the Lord. But this is a quantum leap in your spiritual progress, and we're very, very happy for you. We're overjoyed that you've taken, you're determined to take this step. We're all smiling along with you. And if you stick closely to the principles which you're going to be promising before Guru, and you chant this most wonderful, all merciful mantra, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And your success is uh, guaranteed. In a, Lecture at the initiation ceremony in 1932, um, Srila Bhakti Srinata Saraswati Thakur, he said famously, I see no reason why all my disciples cannot go back to God in one life. So he's not exaggerating, stating the, the truth. The onus is on us. We have the help of the Vaishnavas, we have the help of the Guru, we have the help of Hari. The onus is on us to follow in their footsteps uh, with determination very seriously and we can achieve perfection. So many devotees in this Iskand movement have already gone back to the spiritual world. That's confirmed by Sri Prabhupada. My dear beloved Godwither Jayananda Prabhu, who relatively served a short time in this movement, considering how long many of us have been serving. He was such a beloved disciple of Sri Prabhupada, just a hard worker. Chanted his rounds and did his service. Oh, gave his life to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada wrote him a posthumous letter, which was printed by Prabhupada's desire in our Dr. Godhead magazine, wherein Prabhupada said to Jainan Prabhu, I'm very proud to have a disciple like you. He said, when you realized your body was diseased, you wrote to me, what is the use of this diseased body? Let me give it up and continue my service somewhere else. God was very proud of him. And he said to Jayananda that um, if you had any amount of material desires still in your heart, then you've gone to Shwargalo. And there you can live for millions of years and fulfill those desires, while at the same time making progress in Krishna consciousness back home back to the spiritual world. He said, if you don't perfect yourself there, then you'll come back down to the earth planet after millions and millions of years, and you'll take birth in the family of devotees. Where you can again take up the process of Krishna consciousness and perfect yourself. He said, but because at the moment of your departure, you were hearing the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. 
I say you have gone to Krishna Mahaprabhu. Jaya Nanda Prabhu. So here we see one of our own. I mean, Prabhupada said Jaya Nanda is his God's first saint. But in many ways he was just like him and me. We're all trying in our best to serve Guru and Guranga. It just shows that a devotee of, in our, of our stature, all of us, by the mercy of Guru and Guranga, we can achieve perfection in this lifetime. One time a devotee said to Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, I just want to distribute your books birth after birth after birth. I said, what? <laughs> that is a nice sentiment, he said, but this Kali Yuga is going to get worse and worse and worse. <laughs> so finish up your business in this lifetime and go back home back to God. So all of the initiatives have that opportunity. If you're determined, you can make it. And uh, Maharaj and my blessings are on you. And most important, Shri Prabhupada's blessings are upon you. Hari Krishna's uh, are ever well this year as well. And all these wonderful Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas. We'll raise our hands and we'll say Sadhu three times to give you all our blessings. Please, everyone, raise our hands. Sadhu! Oh, they're mostly ladies. Sadhu! also there, husband and Madhava, the son, and the mother is also there, yes, so we require all of your blessings. Uh, this is the right direction, please. <laughs> so, Uh, uh, and 
I received my initiation, I, uh, I had to also go and connect. It was, I still remember, I, it was 10, 10 German marks, and I sent them to Prabhupada, and he said, wrote a letter back, thank you. And, and he said, this is actually our process. It is uh, necessary. If, if you have nothing, you can just, after the initiation, you go around, say, I'm very poor. Um, you please give something for to complete the ceremony. Also, we will have to give something to Satuatma or priest. We will have to after after after. <laughs> First, he must do his work. Uh, <laughs> this is completing the circle. I, I'm hundred percent sure about it. Wow. And when the disciples go around and collect, uh, my disciples, you go first. <laughs> I'm in the footsteps of my very bold godmother. <laughs> 